Welcome everybody to this lesson on writing equations of perpendicular lines. So at this point you already know how to write an equation of a parallel line, um, which we learned in a previous lesson. So now we're going to figure out how to write an equation of a line perpendicular to a given line. All right, let's jump off here. So line C is given by the equation y equals 2 fifths x minus 12. What would be the slope of a line that's perpendicular to line C? Okay. So the first thing we have to do is let's identify the slope of line C. And it's already in y equals mx plus b format. So we can see that the slope of line C is 2 fifths. Okay. If we wanted a parallel line, then we would use 2 fifths again. But since we want a perpendicular line, we're going to want to use the negative reciprocal of 2 fifths. So remember, a negative reciprocal is flipping the sign and flipping the fraction. So negative 5 over 2 is going to be the slope of a line that's perpendicular to line C. Okay, let's put that into practice now with writing an equation. So we have a line given by this equation, and we want an equation of a line that's perpendicular, okay, so I'm using negative reciprocals, um, and passes through this point A, 6, negative 7. So remember in our last lesson, I've shown you two methods for how to solve this, y equals mx plus b and the point slope form. So either I'm going to kind of use both today again, just so you can get the hang of both. So here we go. Um, let's, let's see this. Let's start with this. I know that the slope of the line I want needs to have the negative reciprocal of this slope. So I know the slope I'm going to use is negative one third X because negative one third is the negative reciprocal of three, right? All right. What I don't know is what's the B value of my line here. So to figure that out, I can plug in the x and the y from the given equation, all right? And now I just need to solve for b uh, after plugging in the x and the y value. So I'll do some math here. So negative 7. Uh, let's make 6 a fraction. So we have negative 6 over 3, negative 6 over 3, plus b. I'll go over here. So I have negative 7 equals negative 2 plus b, add 2 to both sides, so b is going to equal negative 5, okay? So now I can put that into one single equation uh, for my final answer, so I'm going to say my perpendicular line is negative 1 third x minus 5. As always, you want to check with Desmos to make sure you're right. It'll basically give you like instant confirmation that you did this correct. So we have y equals negative one third x minus five. Okay, that's our line in blue here. Here's our original line. You can see that our line in blue, it passes through six negative seven. And just visually speaking, we can see that we're making a perpendicular line. We can be pretty sure that we are at least. All right, so let's add this to your notes so you, you have uh, this in there. So to write the equation of a perpendicular line, you need to take the slope of the given line and find its negative reciprocal. All right, so a perpendicular line is going to have a negative reciprocal slope. You can then use this slope and a given point. You're always going to need some kind of point to write the equation of the line using either the slope intercept form or the point slope form, which remember slope intercept form is what I just used in the last uh, problem. Point slope form, how about this? I'll use this on the next problem just so you can see both methods. By now, you should be kind of figuring out which of these two you like better. They both get you to the same place. All right, here in this one, if you feel like you're ready, you can pause it here um, and see if you can uh, do this one on your own. I'm going to jump into 1A here. So given this, these two points, U and V, we want an equation of a line that goes through point U and is perpendicular to line UV. Okay, so we want to think through this one. We need to first figure out what's the slope of line UV. Since it's not given as an equation, it's given as two points, I can use the slope formula to figure out what the equation is, or excuse me, what the slope is. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So those negatives are going to become positive, so we're going to have 2 over 11. Okay, so the slope is 2 over 11. So that means if our slope's 2 over 11, 
the slope we're going to want to use is the negative reciprocal of that, which is negative 11 over 2 is going to be our actual slope that we use for our perpendicular lines. Okay, so let's give that a shot. My negative sign got weird. Okay, let's give that a shot. So through point U, let's use, um, let's use a point slope form. So we're going to say y minus y1, so y minus negative 1, equals the slope, which we're going to use, which is a negative 11 over 2 times x minus x1. All right, and then if we solve that out, we have the equation. We just need to simplify it. Okay, so this is going to become a plus. So we have y plus 1, y plus 1, equals negative 11 over 2x. And then I need to add that together and multiply negative 11 over 2 times 4. So this is going to be minus 11 over 2 times 4. And let's just call it 4 over 1. Let's make it a fraction right now. Okay, so continuing the problem here, I still have y plus 1 equals negative 11 over 2x. Let's see. Negative 11 times 4, that's negative 44 divided by 2. So negative 44 divided by 2, that's going to be negative 22. So I need to just do one more thing. I need to take this 1 and move it over. So we're going to say y equals negative 11 over 2x minus 23. That is the equation of your line. Okay, why don't you pause it here again. Um, the next question is a very similar question, but now we want to pass through point V. So pause it here, see if you get the answer that I get. All right, here's the answer I got. Y equals negative 11 over 2X plus 79 over 2. Um, some of you might have turned this into a fract or into a decimal rather. So you might have said instead of that, you could have said plus 39.5 instead, which is totally fine. You could have done plus 39.5. That came out messy. Let's try that again. Plus 39.5. I just decided to represent it as a fraction. But those are your two perpendicular lines passing through each of those two points. Now this is a great opportunity to use Desmos to check because it really gives you a good visual that you did it correctly here. Here's um, the line that connects U and V is right here. Okay. And then these are the two lines that we just we just wrote the equations for. So this was y equals negative 11 over 2x plus 79 over 2. So that's going to hit the y-axis way high up there. And then this other one was y equals negative 11 over 2x minus 23, right? So we can see that we're, we're making that perpendicular intersection um, and it's hitting the points we want. And even cooler, I think what you can kind of tell here now is that these two lines, because they're both perpendicular to the given line, they must be parallel to each other. So you may be starting to see that, huh, this kind of looks like a part of a rectangle or a square or something with 90 degree angles. All right, speaking of that, let's take a look at these three equations that are graphed um, at the right and let's match them to their um, to their correct line. You probably see that these are recognizable equations. These are the two we actually just found right here. So let's, let's see them now that we have kind of a graph and a different scale. Well, negative 11 over 2, that's our negative slopes. So it's got to be these two lines here that are going negatively. So which one is going to hit at negative 23? Well, that's going to be this one here. So here is, whoops. So the blue one is this one, okay? And then that means that the green one is this one, all right? Because they both have the negative slope and the only difference is where their y-intercept is. Um, so that means the red one here has to be this one. And watch why this makes sense. So first thing, the slope is positive. So you can see that this line is increasing, right? And then you also have a very, very tiny um y-intercept like it's just below the origin right just below the origin so there you go okay now that we know which line matches what let's think about if we wanted to make a fourth line to create a rectangular region 
would be the equation of that line. Um, and let's say it has to pass through the point 0, 020. Okay, so we know we're gonna wanna use one of these slopes again. And the one we wanna use is the one that doesn't already have a match, right? Because we want a fourth line that's gonna be basically parallel to this line, just hitting at a different location. So we're gonna use y equals two over 11 x. And because it's 0, 020, I need to figure out the B value. Okay, now you could totally go ahead, plug in the zero and the and the 20. So we have 20 over here. We have two 11s times zero plus B. So I'm using the Y equals MX plus B method, obviously. This is zero. So you have 20 equals B. So Y equals two over 11 X plus 20. Okay, totally fine to do it that way. Now, if you saw something a little quicker, they already gave you the y-intercept. They gave you the b value as 20 right there. 0, 20 is the y-intercept. So we could have just jumped straight to this equation if we saw that, but it's okay if we didn't. So this line, I'm sketching it, but it's gonna be somewhere, somewhere over here, right? Somewhere going through this point, and then we've created a rectangle. At least we know we've created 90 degree intersections. We don't know for sure it's a rectangle, I guess, until we find the distance of the sides but we know we've made four 90 degree angles with these four equations. All right, folks, if you need some extra opportunities, extra practice, there's some practice problems on IXL. Just know here that the practice problems have parallel and perpendicular lines. So you're gonna be asked to kind of do both of those skills that you've learned this week. Um, and then if you just wanna see the explanation from a different voice, here's a Khan Academy video for you. These will both be linked to the YouTube video. And then now you can take on that exit ticket. Good luck, you all. Have a great day.